All right, so let's talk about Neil deGrasse Tyson. That's right, people. It is time. And finally, doing the Neil deGrasse Tyson video I've been talking about. <laughs> oh, man. You know, by popular demand. And with popular demand, I mean myself, because no one really asked for it, you know. <laughs> but I'm going to do it anyway. So here it is. Buckle up, because it's going to be a wild ride. Oh, okay, so where do I begin? This guy, Neil deGrasse Tyson, you know. He's supposed to be this top scientist guy, you know, this voice of logic and reason and, you know, he's supposed to be this, I mean, he knows stuff about, you know, outer space and asteroids and, and you know, stars and planets, um, but that doesn't mean that he's a voice of, you know, reason or, or anything like that. That doesn't give him any special, you know, uh, quality of you know like empathy or or anything like that or, or ethics or, or morals he can still be a bad person just because he reads a lot and he knows uh, about a lot of uh, stuff uh, regarding science of course and you know astrophysics or whatever astronomy whatever uh, like I said it doesn't mean that the guy knows anything else and I think he's proven time and again that he really doesn't. You know, he, he just doesn't get it. Either he is an ignorant buffoon, really, or just a troll, or he's just playing one on TV because I, I don't get it, really. Like, how can someone so supposedly intelligent and knowledgeable and well-read can be so misguided and misinformed and... I don't know, just so blatantly ignorant, um, you know, it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense, but then again, who knows, maybe the guy's just a huge meat flake, and, and I wanted to point out that he did win David Graham's Meat Flake of the Year Award 2022, I actually uh, gave my vote to Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, for that award, and Deservedly so, you know, well, well uh, deserved. He really was the uh, mid flake of the year, and he even published a, a ridiculous book in which he, uh, I mean, he wrote a chapter on vegans and animal rights uh, activism and stuff. And he's trying to ridicule the whole thing by saying outlandish and outrageous stuff that doesn't even make sense and he comes up with the wildest hypothetical scenarios and so so something so ridiculous and, and it's a strategy you know and, and you need to be aware of these type of uh, strategies and these logical fallacies and and wild hypo hypotheticals uh, that he uses because he does this on purpose and, and I'll be pr uh, paraphrasing a lot here uh, uh, you know, uh, I'll be you know repeating what he said in the in the past, and and recently, of course, uh, but you know not uh, verbatim as they say. Uh, I'll be paraphrasing. You know, and uh, you can you can look it up for yourself, uh, of course. Uh, after watching this video, hopefully, <laughs> you can just uh, look it up for yourself. And uh, you know, type in. Neil deGrasse Tyson on uh, vegans or Neil deGrasse Tyson on veganism and it'll show up you know in the results you can see and hear all the stupid stuff he said uh, about it but I'm gonna tell you the, 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 the wildest things or the ones that really grind my gears personally you know at a personal level because it's so mind-numbingly dumb that you cannot even believe that he's actually saying this stuff uh, so well, any, in any case, here it goes. Now, uh, one thing he he said something about, and, and this is probably the most ridiculous one. Something about uh, people describing uh, the portobello mushrooms as quote unquote meaty. So that, and, and then he said something like, 
portobello the, the mushrooms and humans share like a common ancestor from I don't know how long ago so by eating mushrooms we are in a way eating ourselves so it's cannibalism to eat a mushroom this is something that he a top scientist said okay just try to <laughs> you know try to actually comprehend this thought process oh portobello mushroom equals meaty meaty equals flesh mushroom human common ancestor therefore humans eat themselves by eating mushrooms how about that what 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 a gem well, well really what a, what a gem you know <laughs> bloody hell mate and it doesn't get any better uh, another thing he said something about milk and honey not killing any animal that those two foods are the only two that don't kill any animal how about that is he this ridiculously uh, ignorant or is he doing it on purpose because bloody hell mate like you don't even know how honey and milk is quote unquote obtained because yeah it does kill a bunch of animals and more than kill it abuses tortures beyond belief you know it, it's it's horrible all the all, all the things uh, we put uh, these animals uh, through just because of these two foods that he calls you know innocent foods that don't kill anyone amazing and he's like yeah bees can make more honey even if you take it from them and cows can make more milk all right yeah they can of course they can but the problem is we take it all that's the thing but you know what whatever even if it if it didn't kill any animal which it does you're still forcibly impregnating these animals to mass produce them so they make a bunch of this stuff that you want to steal from them how is that any better even if you didn't kill any of those uh, cows or bees or whatever which they do but you know but even if they didn't all the other horrible stuff that is done to them is still horrible so i don't know where he got the idea that milk and honey don't kill anyone or don't cause any harm because it does now and, and he said something even more ridiculous like milk and honey is even in the Bible what does that mean even in the Bible like oh whoa it's in the Bible so it must be good like what dude come on you're a scientist what Bible get the hell out of here no wonder you won meat flake of the year bloody hell really but okay uh, another thing he said something about uh, what if a mouse enters your home and then <laughs> and you were trying to save the, the, the mouse, you, you trap him in a humane trap, you know, those catch and release traps and you release him into the wild again. So now this mouse is not going to live as long as he would living in your home because he would live longer, you know, inside your house than out there in the wild where he can get eaten by predators or whatever. Well, the problem here is that there's no guarantee that the mouse is going to live longer. He could, you know, bite into some wiring or something, get fried. You have no electric power. The mouse is dead. Now you have a dead mouse, you know, <laughs> and no electricity. And also, you don't know what the mouse could do or not. The, the mouse droppings and stuff uh, could, you know, make you sick or whatever. And then the mouse could reproduce. And there's a bunch of mice now in your home eating everything you know and causing a huge mess or best case scenario the mouse lives there and then the predators like snakes or something enter your home as well so now you only you not only have to deal with the mouse now you have to deal with a snake or something like what the hell no like who wants that i i sure don't so i don't know like it's better to just release the mouse they got a better fighting chance out there yes they're you know they might get eaten by a predator that's true but you know 
it, it is what it is. Like choose your poison, you know, whatever. I don't know. But <laughs> I don't know. It, it's weird. And even if it if it was the case, so what what's he saying here? That oh no, you you can't save a mouse. So shoot a baby cow in the head. I I don't get it. Like oh, he's going to continue oppressing and abusing and, and killing a bunch of animals, land animals, sea animals, and, and all those animals because he can't save a mouse or or, or, or whatever. Like he can't guarantee the mouse uh, life or whatever. Man alive, dude! Come on. <sighs> this is an appeal to fu to futility that that just is is just my normally stupid. Uh, I don't know something other stupid thing. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. The the one about the 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 vegetable aliens. Like, how about a, a a race of vegetable aliens come to Earth? They see us eating only vegetables. They're sentient vegetables, so they see us munching on like green bell peppers or something, and they're like, "That's horrible," because these aliens, these hypothetical aliens, uh, they feed off sunlight. You know. So they have no need to consume like any vegetable or any animal of their planet. So when they see us uh, not harming any animal, but harming vegetables that look like them, but are not sentient. And this is something that I should point out. Our vegetables are not sentient. They are, they kind of look like a vegetable or something, or maybe they are, let's say that they are an alien green belt pepper with, you know, uh, you know, a brain and a functioning, you know, uh, beating heart or, or whatever, and they're aware and they can travel, uh, you know, uh, astronomical distances to other planets, but they can't comprehend the fact that animals and plants are a thing, you know? Amazing. The, according to this guy, they, they don't understand animals, but they understand plants. Yeah, right. A, a highly advanced race, advanced enough to travel to Earth, and make contact with us cannot grasp the concept of an animal amazing but you know what uh, so okay but the fact is that they would understand that we humans cannot feed off sunlight we cannot eat sunlight or air or whatever so we need to eat something uh, a life form in this in this case a non-sentient life form such as plants so in our case this is justified because we still need to eat something to survive and this thing that we eat is non-sentient at all so we're not causing any harm here in our planet not over there where green bell peppers are you know someone here they're not someone they are something so it is justified here even if it wouldn't be justified over there can you even grasp this concept, Mr. Tyson? I don't know. And well, you know, I don't know. He said a bunch of stuff like this. It's ridiculous. The other one that really is absolutely horrendous is like, he's going, uh, like, what about mosquitoes and ticks? And are we going to, like, if ticks were endangered, would we create a movement to save the ticks? And the Lyme virus wants to live? Uh, and I don't know. Mr. Tyson, are we farming mosquitoes and ticks? Are we forcibly impregnating ticks to steal their milk and their babies and shoot them in the head? Because I don't think that's happening. And if uh, an insect or any kind of life form poses a threat to our health or lives, it is understandable that we will fight back and defend ourselves. But in a situation where we're not uh, threatened by anyone, like a cow or a pig or, or anything like that, what, what's the threat a, a pig can, can harm you or anything? You live in a, in a city. You never see a cow or a pig or a, or, or a rooster or whatever. You know, only on TV. <laughs> like dude what the heck you're not your life isn't being threatened by any of these beings and you're not defending yourself you're sending them to their doom just because hey you want to have a steak or sushi night or pizza night or whatever completely unnecessary completely unjust 
and horrendous. So yeah, I don't know, guys. You know, uh, that's all I have to say. What, what, what a moron! What, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. What do you think? <laughs> and uh, you know what? Go check out the uh, David Rams Mid Flake of the Year award video if you haven't. Um, it's really fun. I mean, it's not fun that these uh, moronic dudes are, you know, such a big meat flakes. But, you know, it is what it is. And uh, as always, you know, stop hurting animals and start turning veganese. Till next time.